great pleasure to uh, share with you uh, some of our uh, experience, especially that uh, few uh, POC and some few try project that we have been uh, working with uh, many of tier one uh, service provider in North America, in Europe, and Asia Pacific, and eventually uh, we come out uh, the first uh, very hot uh, topic uh, software uh, defined network and. Uh, network function virtualization application, which is uh, uh, in two years ago uh, when I start the telecom application business unit at Denna, uh, we have been uh, keeping uh, to tell our sales team, uh, marketing team, that we were keeping focus on only three applications. First of all, is uh, uh, the uh, edge router or the uh, software defined uh, networking uh, uh, devices. The second is the NFV uh, related the platform that will utilize uh, uh, the computing power uh, from Intel and also the uh, uh, bandwidth uh, solution uh, using uh, uh, terabit uh, switching fabric plus uh, some uh, storage capability. Uh, and the third is uh, <coughs> software defined CPE that two years ago uh, People don't tell, don't call it uh, virtual CD until earlier last year. And uh, one of the hardest uh, uh, virtual CPE application uh, today uh, is a so-called uh, SD WAN or Cloud WAN. And uh, fortunately, uh, together with uh, the cooperation uh, with our uh, ISV and our colleague in the United States. Uh, we have, I think, a push almost uh, every uh, vendor's ISV, they are doing uh, uh, software development. So we have uh, a bunch of experience uh, sharing with uh, our customer on the uh, performance issues, on the interoperability issues, uh, and more or less uh, uh, from today to uh, year 2020, uh, the 5G uh, is also under uh, some uh, spec foundation and uh, some aggressive uh, service provider, they already start uh, for some uh, pilot projects. And thanks to uh, uh, our VIP uh, guests from Yena and from Intel, and fortunately, unfortunately, uh, that uh, one of our speakers from uh, Siena uh, couldn't make the trip uh, this time, but we looking forward to see Siena uh, next time. So uh, Spain will be and the behavior of uh, Paul to present uh, his uh, slide on the uh, Blue Orbit uh, uh, ecosystems. So uh, uh, the 5G is coming, and the baseline of 5G uh, is not only based on those uh, spectrum or radio uh, spec from the 3GPP, but also most important thing is the neural function virtualization. So uh, let's uh, start our seminar. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rick from Intel. It's my honor and pleasure to be able to be here uh, to get invited by Daniel to join this seminar to be able to share with you about something about the network transformation and uh, what Intel has been doing together with our partner like uh, Daniel who accelerated the whole transformation of the, uh, the network. Okay. So, uh, to the topic of today, I think the first question will be why the network transformation matters. It matters because we see the, the challenges or needs in this industry for the networking. I think first of all is the increasing data demand or data traffic all over the internet or networking environment. So uh, according to the uh, Cisco research data, we have reached uh, Zeta by last year, and it's going to be uh, 2.3 Zeta by in 2020, and 82% of that is the video data, which is not a surprise to everyone. To give you an idea of what the Zeta by, how big is Zeta by, is uh, around 20 billion Blu-ray disc, dual dual layer Blu-ray disc. So think about the like big amount of data flowing or traveling around the the networking. 
So this is actually a challenging part of the network itself needs to be transformed. And secondly is that uh, business agility. So actually IT and the business unit uh, used to run with different goals. But not too long ago, we have been seeing the IT executive have been asked to be able to run the supporting uh, software or service smoothly to support the business. So the business differentiation and the agile is the goal for the CEO right now. So the CEO right now is actually finding a new revenue generation with the different service applications and the networking usage. For example, uh, Netflix, uh, the Airbnb, those are new business model and business model that drive the needs of the network infrastructure to be improved. And then thirdly, we still, you can see with all the, that much of data, that much amount of data flying around to support your business, it has become more and more important to protect your data. Uh, here's the number here. So the average total cost of a data breach was less than three billion in 2015. But not too far ago, uh, I think people still remember WannaCry virus. So there, the, the total cost of this uh, WannaCry virus attraction is still under investigation, but there are some research data already shown that the four billions of uh, costs already been foreseen. So you can see how much uh, more and more importance the security of protect your data could be. So with the, those challenges, that can address the business need as well. So Intel is committed to uh, to work with the industry to to find a solution for this kind of uh, challenges over here. So that's why we need to transfer our networking and network transformation methods. Okay, and let's take a look about the uh, spending as well. So we can see those are the data around uh, the industry-wise people or company will spend how much money on the different category. First one is the network spend. So we see more and more uh, cloud service provider, they will spend uh, like a two and three hundred, two, uh, two and thirty-eight hundred billion around 2020s in, in not just network power, but also the software and the operational technology itself. And then cloud, cloud also be a big part of it. Uh, we, we see 57 billion spending for uh, private and for private cloud and the public cloud. So maybe 30% of, of this will be private cloud and 60% will be uh, public cloud. So there will be a mix of public and private cloud spending as well. So going to NFV, uh, Network Function Virtualization and SDN, we first see the tangible spending on NFV and SDN was the 25th, uh, 20, 14, that's three years ago, and with more than 100% growth rate year by year, we are going to reach 157 billion in 2020 as well. So, not to mention, we see more and more uh, network utilization, and uh, the spending here are actually the internet service like uh, pay content, uh, cloud service, or uh, social ad all oh, the e-commerce uh, commission for the e-commerce those is will going to be a eight, more than 800 billion by 2020 so with this number here you can see these are actually economic goals uh, economic opportunity for for those investment to, to to drive to build the more intelligent network to fulfill to meet the requirement of the coming IoT, Internet of Things, and 5G as well. So we just mentioned there will be there are more and more new usage model or business model. So new business means new opportunity to everyone, not just Intel. 
So we see uh, a VR uh, gaming, autonomy driving, uh, machine learning, and some smart uh, building or smart city. Those uh, Intel already have our portfolio to address that kind of uh, needs. For example, we have data center, we have a uh, cloud uh, usage model of technology, and also the connection things and devices here, like a uh, uh, PC, like a uh, car, like a robotics, so on and so forth. And with the uh, product of portfolios, we also have the FPGA and memory to enhance the performance as well. And you can see with the new opportunity here, the new experience driving new uh, network transformation needs. So today, we are going to talk about this uh, net connection because the connection is actually the networking is, is actually the thing who connects all the usage all together. <clears throat> like Genius mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we see 5G. I think before moving to 5G, we are getting more and more used to to make some decision uh, based on knowledge and data. Because we already uh, digitalized uh, a lot of information in our daily life. For example, uh, we, just been, uh, we just had a four-day holiday yesterday. So when, you, when I, drive, I draw back to Taipei, I need a Google map to, to see which route should I go. Or maybe yesterday, I, I need to check the weather to see uh, how to wear today. So you can see this kind of uh, uh, technology already changing our life. And with 5G, we are more excited actually because we see more and more new usage model based on 5G, like uh, machine learning, VR gaming, we just mentioned, and auto autonomy driving, all that smart cities and uh, buildings, smart buildings. Uh, those are becoming available because of the 5G connection. The connection is uh, everywhere. And actually the, the bandwidth and the, the lower latency is there. So 5G can meet those uh, requirements for this, uh, the new usage models. So what are the requirements? Uh, probably uh, more data. Uh, we see a thousand times of data capacity is needed for those kind of new usage model. And uh, with lower latency, 10 times of reduction is expected to be able to support those the new uh, requirements for those new uh, 5G usage case. To be able to achieve the goals, it is really important to transfer the network from end to end, not just from this uh, smart devices, like your smartwatch, or your tablet, or your car. So think about what the data goes with your smartwatch. I think it goes all the way to from the radio access, access network to, or to cloud. And sometimes we see the new application, a new usage there. You see the cloud also push the data all the way to your uh, devices and devices. So, uh, the point here is that the network, to be able to achieve the requirements, the network needs to be transferred from end to end. And the NFV and SDN is actually the foundation of that, as well as the packet processing to enhance the performance. So what is the NFV and SDN matters for this kind of transformation? I think the NFV SDN is basically the virtualization <coughs> It means that uh, you can run multiple and scale the uh, multiple network function on top of a single piece of hardware or equipment. And these functions could be programmable because they are running on a general purpose built uh, system or compute systems. With this kind of uh, programmable capability actually give us the flexibility to path the way to, to 5G. So I'm going to talk about the uh, so uh, virtualization, virtualization later. So we actually have some strategy for the 5G networking. I think the first one is world of convergence because we see there are more and more mobility and uh, computing power are mixing together, are converging together. 
uh, it's hard to distinguish the, which one is which. And the next one is the, what I just mentioned, the virtual network, uh, network virtualizations. And the third one is the, we are going to see at, at the end of the day with the 5G enablement is the end-to-end -end transformation here. So there are three uh, strategies we are seeing for the 5G enablement. So even today, we work with some uh, service provider to run the POC on trial. And we have some timeline to enable all that uh, technology with the Intel. Okay. So talk, talk about the workload we are having in the network, uh, network communications. I think the first one is the physical. There we have signal processing, AD, either to the uh, digital converting and band, of course. And we have the package uh, content processing. And we also see the, uh, for example, the DPI and to meet some QSO compression. And we also have the manageability uh, requirement to meet. Uh, so we have the control plan processing as well. So on top of that, we see the application processing like a BSS and OSS to run, to be able to support the business and run the business. Uh, with all that, Intel is working with our partner like uh, Data. Data actually has full, the whole range of portfolio products to meet to be able to move those uh, workloads, for workloads to IA-based platforms. So I think uh, you can find more information from them to see uh, what they, they can provide to, to meet all your needs. I think the point here is that uh, though all of those can be moving to IA and Intel has been in the network industry for 30 years to, to be able to fulfill the needs. Okay. So what is the network virtualization? I think we see here yesterday, actually today is also the same. We see a lot of uh, purpose-built uh, network appliances. For example, router, VPN, and FireWire. So actually those are uh, separated uh, sparks. So you have a box of router here, you have a box of VPN, you have a box of FireWire. And then on top of each of these box, you have the management console of it because uh, everyone needs to be managed. So you see there are silo management consoles over there. So this is what we have and yesterday and actually we are having some of them today. But with the virtualization, you see there are architecture conversion, conversion here. You, you can see on top of a single piece of hardware, there are multiple virtual uh, routers, multiple virtual VPNs, and multiple virtual file, firewalls, all running together with the unified management console, because they are also very best uh, virtualized uh, network functions. And not just only, as a unified management console actually uh, will be more easier for the IT to manage all the, the, all the functions, uh, network functions. Uh, also, we have the infrastructure-wise orchestration. What does that mean? Because it means that uh, you might need some computing power, storage, and uh, networking all together. So this part, we can uh, leverage the, the resource you have as a pool to run or deploy the, the service when needed. This is actually the flexibility of virtualization. So actually, the network virtualization drive the scale and agility. So think about uh, adding a new piece of hardware here. It may take months or more than a month to, to deploy to your branch, to your customer. But it could be taking a second or so just deploy the service to your customer side. And we are converting not just for the architecture, but also the value chain. What I just mentioned, the, be able to deploy the service in seconds and also the business process. We see more and more business process uh, looking for NRV and SDN, not, be, not just because they want the new architecture, but also their, their process, their business process need that kind of agility as well. So actually, this is not a, a from here to here transformation. 
we we still see a lot of uh, purpose built uh, network price that remain today. But we are just saying we are seeing more and more needs and benefit from adding an VSD into the current uh, industry. Okay. All right, and what Intel helps uh, in this kind of uh, network transformation? Starting from here, I think in the center we have the we have the Intel technology. We have our CPU, our link, our link car, and even FPGA software piece of that. So we have our technology ready, and we also collaborate with the end user, like enterprise, like a com service provider, like a cloud service provider, to address the needs for the network transformation here. That's what we work with our customer, and starting from end user sometimes, and to be able to address the the need for network transformation. Intel also participate uh, to contribute the open society. And sometimes we uh, do some internal work, like uh, DPDK, as a developer key, that is a software piece of that. And then we just uh, open source this one, as a, uh, to put it to the open source community. So that is the Intel investment as well for the open standard and open source community. And the third one is to be able to have a single piece of software or system that actually combine the hardware piece of that software solution all together to be able to be a POC uh, for the trial or for the deployment. And with that, we actually work with Dana as well. So Dana has the reference architecture of with their own software partner here. I think uh, we can have a, a more uh, example from later, later. And then last one, last but not least, is that we are actually building and trying to build a strong ecosystem through the Intel network builders. Uh, why we need a strong ecosystem? Because I, we know there is not there is there is no a single company can achieve all of those uh, uh, transformation work. No one can no single company can be, can can done can do it by their own. So with the strong ecosystem, we see more innovation, and we actually reduce the developing effort. And we also can contribute or at the best the standard open standard as well, and working together with other companies. As I say, sometimes uh, maybe your company just has a hardware piece of that, and some company has a software piece of that, and you need as SI to be able to find you a, a customer, a real customer, to do the PLC, and to go to the, uh, to reduce the time to market. This is what we see for the benefit of uh, of an open ecosystem or strong open ecosystem. And this is why uh, Intel Network Builders begins. Intel Network Builders is Intel-led uh, ecosystem. Uh, we have been working with ISP, OSP, OEMs, ODMs, and TEMS and SI, and then users as well. Because we are sharing the same goal is to accelerate the network transformation uh, on the Intel architecture based uh, servers. I don't know if you can see that clearly or not. That is actually part of our partner as well. Yeah. Right in the middle, in the center of this picture. <laughs> so with that, you have a lot of uh, partner you can work in together. Sometimes you can find your business here or your uh, there will be someone needs uh, your help that can find you here. That's what we call and an strong. That's what the benefit of the strong ecosystem. For and how does the in, Intel uh, network builders help our customers or our members here in three kinds of uh, category? I think first one is the technology uh, enablement. 
we build the tools and we share to the industry to be able to run and test and to show the to reduce their development effort. And sometimes this software or hardware piece of that of a, a system will need optimization. So we with this uh, builders program, we can help to optimize as well. And sometimes we see our uh, third party has the dev, or our customer needs a dev, or sometimes this dev is from Intel. We need to have some collaboration. Intel also has the help with the dev and, uh, engagements as well. And then the most important thing recently is that we have the network builders at university. This is actually where we post all the network related uh, uh, technology or data to this, uh, to this community as a, a university. So as your customer or, or our customer partner themselves, they can find a lot of uh, useful information here to enable all the technology needed in the network transformation. And then we have the go-to-market part of the uh, uh, enablement here. So we have a website here, and we connect our partner website, our portal as well. So you can put everything, uh, you can treat that as an advertisement for your company. And also, uh, we have some face-to-face -face uh, events, or sometimes not face-to-face -face webinar event. Uh, we invite our members to, be, to introduce the, their company to, to the industry as well. So, Take that as an opportunity when, when, when you know this event, you want to be there fast face or you want to deliver a webinar. And then we know how to, we have the exercise for go to market when we know which are the best uh, marketing vehicle that we can drive to, to be able to show the go to market time. So one of them is to, so I just mentioned, we, sometimes we might have some roadshow events so we will have the first first uh, uh, meetings that we can have the matchmaking uh, opportunity there, and also we collaborate with the trials or POC with some uh, with OEMs or ODMs for hardware and for some ISV to work with our partner with our car service provider, which we would like to see to be able to come commercialize. But this is what we do for as a sales enablement as well. And I think the most important thing is here uh, to capture the feedback directly from the end user, not just from a single piece of the company for this uh, society. But I think the end user will give you the more direct uh, feedback that ha they have. So that is uh, how internet network builders to help the, to, to drive a strong ecosystem. I think this is uh, my last page here. So the industry is transforming, and that will lead us a lot of opportunities, especially the 5G. So to be part of that, I think join the network builders will be the first, very good first step to be able to join this, uh, get, be part of this uh, opportunities. Thank you. It's my first time to be in Taiwan. Um, so my topic here is uh, high performance multi rendering free performance solutions for VCP. Uh, actually, we can also use it for all the other edge solutions, like from uh, VRAN to SD1, etc. They are kind of similar. So a little word about uh, our company. It's called uh, Inia. Uh, so we are in the uh, telco industry for almost a half century now. Uh, so we are based in Sweden, uh, and we are the back end of uh, many uh, everything at Nokia uh, wireless base stations. Uh, so basically we do uh, RTOS, or real-time operating system, from the beginning. And uh, we also acquire another French company called Cosmos. Uh, what they do is uh, do the uh, traffic uh, analysis or network intelligence. That's uh, very interesting to the operators because their, their bandwidth is consumed by a lot of uh, OTT applications. 
so they want to do kind of a QoS uh, or other analysis. So basically, we have um, uh, three billion people uh, courage relying on our technology to make a phone call, even surfing the web, due to the uh, the deployment of virus in the uh, systems. Uh, basically, our product portfolio. The left side is our legacy. I, you can see we have RTOS, we have Linux, and also network stack, and also memory uh, in memory database. Uh, so today we will talk about the uh, MFE uh, uh, products. Basically, we have two. Uh, one is the uh, core product, uh, which is deployed in the central office or data centers. Uh, the other is uh, access. That's uh, on the uh, customer premise side. Uh, also, the uh, layer seven network intelligence, as we talked about, we bought Cosmos. They have a product called uh, Ice Engine. In the MFE world, we can also deploy it in the virtualized environment. So it's called an NFA probe. We can talk about that later. Uh, but it's a very uh, 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 variable you can deploy in the infrastructure and also in the VNF. Uh, also, we have a network management solution, um, uh, similar with the TRF solution. So we have uh, NMS, uh, NMS side called Element uh, Center, and also on device side, it's called Element. Also, we have a global service to do the uh, customization. So our focus of uh, NFE is uh, basically uh, from the edge side. Um, basically, it has uh, access side and also central office. So data center is not our current coverage at the moment. So we, uh, as I said, we are powering uh, Nokia and everything uh, base stations. So we have a strong legacy in this area. So we know the uh, requirements there, like the uh, for 5G, they, they need the uh, high uh, throughput and also the latency, uh, and also mission critical. Uh, so uh, for the VCP, um, this is what we see from our customers. Basically, there are three deployments, uh, deployment models. The first one is a uh, customer premise only. Uh, basically, that's the easiest one. You virtualize everything on the premise side. Uh, the uh, the uh, controller, uh, the, uh, the center office side is uh, just uh, for the controller. And uh, also, the other one is uh, uh, centralized when you you deploy all the virtualized uh, functions in the central office or data center. Basically, that's what we do you, uh, with uh, China operators uh, like Telecom and uh, China Mobile. Uh, it's centralized. Uh, and ideally, in the long run, I think it's a distributed model. You deploy some of the uh, applications here and then some on the premise side. But you will also have to uh, uh, chain them together. We can provide a service function chaining uh, between the access and the core. So here is uh, some of the challenges that we see uh, when we discuss with customer. Uh, so the first one is uh, vendor lock-in. Everyone, so they talk about uh, NFA. Okay, uh, so some uh, big customers, uh, big uh, teams like Huawei, they also build NFA, but from hardware to software, it's uh, provided by one single vendor. It's uh, still another uh, lock-in. So it's not uh, exactly NFA. So NFA means the separation of hardware and software. They, they are interoperability. So I think it gives a very good opportunity to the white box vendors like Blender. And also supporting the white box, as we said. Uh, so if we put in a significant pressure on the hardware cost, uh, because you should uh, uh, generate many uh, new services there, you can deploy a lot of WinFs. Uh, you, uh, we uh, we will guarantee the uh, the customer experience. Uh, you have to control the hardware cost. That's a lot of challenge. You should uh, optimize your software. Also, the uh, ecosystem uh, fragmentation is also uh, another big challenge. Uh, so, for the uh, NFA, ideally, you should uh, separate every layer from the hardware to the authorization to the VNF to the manual part. Okay, so for the data center, this is uh, not a big problem since it's mostly uh, control-centric. Uh, 
But for the um, uh, edge and the networking applications, there are a lot of uh, uh, customized uh, technologies like DVDK, SRV, and also CPU affinity. Uh, also, sometimes you need uh, custom ASICs. Like for 5G, you need a layer one processing with FPGA or other technology. So let's uh, take a look at the, uh, uh, our offering. First one is uh, NFV access is on the consumer uh, uh, pro customer premise side. Uh, basically, it's a minimum footprint uh, lightweight virtualization. See. Um, uh, OpenStack is not necessarily there. You can uh, you can run VM and you can also run Docker. Uh, so we provide a technology called EdgeLink, so that you can manage this device from the central office side. You can do the uh, uh, VNF management, uh, or you can do the service function training using EdgeLink technology. Okay, so we also have a core side. Uh, it's deployed in the, in the uh, POP, point of presence or central office. Uh, and it's based on OpenFE, that's a full OpenStack uh, implementation. Also, you can combine them together. Uh, so here, uh, as we talked about, there are three deployed models. The first one is uh, uh, distributed and uh, centralized and also uh, um, uh, combine the two of them. So we, we support uh, th uh, three different models. Okay, let's take a look at the core platform first. Uh, so the core, as we said, is uh, based on OpenFE. So it has OpenStack. The latest version we use is Newton. And also we have uh, OpenDaylight, Borrow. Uh, also we uh, integrate the uh, HA. So this part is not very mature in the open source. So we deploy and integrate a lot of uh, other open source uh, projects. Uh, so the reason we use uh, ODR is basically for service function training here. Uh, also, we optimize the uh, OS uh, performance. Um, we use the uh, interactive technology OS DVDK. Uh, and also for deep brain acceleration, we are also based on DVDK. We also optimize the QM uh, and storage we use the uh, Ceph. Uh, basically, the uh, the uh, the under uh, box is uh, OpenFE scenario. So we all also have some red boxes here. Some of them are proprietary, like uh, the uh, element ODM, as we said, is the on device management that can provide an netconf and the young interface uh, uh, to the northbound. Uh, we also have a uh, HA uh, solution. And that's one of the weak points of uh, OpenFE. Element Center is uh, for the network management or WinFM. You can use it for both. Uh, we can also provide a Cosmos, uh, both inside the infrastructure and uh, WinF. We can talk about that later. Okay, so here is uh, some uh, highlights uh, of uh, differentiators with the open source. So firstly, uh, we, we implemented uh, Docker. Uh, for the uh, uh, health check or the uh, uh, monitoring part. Uh, we also uh, provided the notification events and alarm management using our uh, HA solution. Uh, also provide a U U uh, root cause analysis and uh, real-time monitoring of your software and uh, hardware issues. Uh, also our first uh, offering is uh, end of Q2, uh, enter first. Uh, also, we have virtualized uh, network uh, uh, performance enhancements. Um, we optimize OS DVDK. Uh, and also, we provide a carry grade performance and quality uh, with a lot of uh, tests. Uh, so currently, we have a public announcement with China Mobile that uh, uh, we will do joint uh, POC with uh, some uh, key applications. Uh, first one should be based on VCPE. And maybe later is uh, we be rest. Uh, mostly it's uh, edge solution. Okay, so next uh, let's talk about the uh, access platform. Um, so it's kind of uh, embedded in its lightweight. So it's a Yakto Linux based. Uh, we have our virtualization profile. Uh, the optimization is kind of similar, like OS DVDK to boost the uh, virtual switch performance. 
Uh, also, we have we provide a GPDK. Uh, on top of that, uh, we have a project called uh, OFP, Open First Path Project. Uh, that's an open source project uh, initiated by India and also Nokia. Uh, that's the uh, TCP IP stack running on top of uh, DBDK. So DBDK solves uh, the uh, packet uh, transmission and latency and also uh, voice the kernel uh, impact. So after that, you should have a kind of the uh, uh, TCP IP stack to accelerate your applications. So basically, we can do TCP and UDP on top of uh, DBDK using OFP. We also optimize the QAM to improve its uh, uh, real-time performance. Uh, also, we have a uh, lightweight Docker uh, virtualization. Also, we can provide ODM uh, on device management and also HA, uh, Edge Link, to connect to the uh, central office side uh, cost region. The optimizations first is uh, QM optimization using uh, some technologies like uh, Nokia's RCO boosting and uh, water interrupt delivery. Uh, thanks to Intel technology, I think uh, that's, um, uh, many of them are supported by hardware. And also uh, zero copy from VM to VM communication, uh, the data plane optimization, uh, and also OS uh, optimization. Uh, what we do is that, that uh, to uh, improve the uh, scalability uh, when you increase the number of flows. And also I uh, use some hardware acceleration to uh, boost the table lookup. Uh, also, on the TX side, we can do a uh, uh, packet batching to improve performance. Uh, the last one is a uh, boot speed optimization. I think that's very critical for the uh, premise side uh, equipment. Uh, so we can do uh, optimize the U-boot uh, with focus on CPU and I/O performance. Uh, also, reduce the amount of uh, services uh, start uh, loaded at boot time. Also, we can do parallelized uh, service starting stuff. <coughs> okay, we will uh, talk about the challenges. Let, uh, let's look at these uh, challenges. First is uh, uh, vendor lock-in. Uh, so we are basically we are using an open source solution and open standards. Uh, so there is no worry about uh, the lock-in. And also we uh, cooperate uh, uh, with the white box vendors for a UCP solution. Uh, so we have uh, VM and Docker support, NetCoffee on SMP, that's uh, all the uh, latest standards. Um, also the other challenge is that the uh, white box hardware, we can provide a uh, uh, different support to them. Okay, the last one is the uh, ecosystem. Uh, so OPNFE is uh, kind of uh, growing very rapidly. So there are big ecosystems that you can leverage when you use uh, OpenFV. Okay, here is the press release we uh, did with uh, China Mobile. Uh, and uh, we are uh, one of the, uh, uh, currently we are in here is kind of the integrator. So uh, we, are do, we are driving this uh, uh, project and uh, we've already started uh, early Q2. So uh, uh, a few slides about uh, the uh, uh, ODM and also our Cosmos product. Uh, so first one is uh, ODM. Uh, we can provide the uh, uh, configuration uh, to the device and also collect all the operational data, uh, like the status and uh, also the uh, error message. Uh, also, we can provide an action request interface. Uh, on top of that, that is the object manager and data store, so that you can store all the uh, uh, configurations into the database. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, northbound interfaces, uh, like NetConf and Young is the de facto standard. Also, we support legacy, uh, like CRI, SMP, and uh, XML RPC. You can also do some customization of your own northbound interface. Uh, we support C, C++, Python, Java, all the uh, uh, programming language, and it's uh, model-driven, uh, so it's uh, very uh, fully compatible. Uh, OFP, uh, as we said, it's uh, based on Inter-ODP, 
uh, on top of that, you can provide a uh, hook here so that you can define your own through, uh, strategy. Sorry. Like some part of the per, uh, the, the uh, packet you do not want to uh, send to the uh, TCP IP stack, you can just uh, call the uh, scheduler and uh, send the packet to the other course or send out. Uh, after that, you can uh, ingress into the TCP IP stack. Uh, on top of that, you can uh, terminate or forward it at uh, uh, UDP or TCP level. Also, we have uh, uh, the uh, connection to the uh, slow path or to the leading side. We use a TAP interface. Some kind of the traffic like uh, SSH, uh, you can route the packet to the Linux kernel. And using that link, you can configure the uh, behavior, the, uh, the forwarding rules, etc. Okay, here is a slide about the uh, Cosmos. We have a product called a Probe. So the Probe can be deployed uh, in the uh, infrastructure layer. Basically, it can hook up with the OS so that it uh, can uh, uh, do some uh, uh, traffic analysis with lower granularity. Because if you do a very high granularity, it will uh, impact your performance very uh, uh, badly. So basically here is uh, just some low granularity. Also you can deploy it uh, in, inside the WinNav. So here uh, is a uh, uh, very uh, high granularity uh, so that you can control your application at a very uh, detailed level. If you know about Cosmos, they can analyze the traffic to application level, like if it's easier, uh, and if uh, if it's email, it, it can analyze the sender, the receiver, uh, the subject, whether it uh, has a uh, attachment, etc. A lot of uh, metadata. Okay, so let's see the uh, uh, value add of uh, this uh, technology. Um, firstly, uh, we move to the NFV. Uh, it's very hard to see the, uh, the network traffic, especially you are running in the WinNav. So using this, you can deploy like in the virtual switch side, then we can provide a kind of uh, uh, standard based report. You can get this uh, traffic information inside your, your application. Then you can do a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of uh, analysis, like one of them is a dynamic service changing. So when you create a, a service chain, basically it's a kind of a static. All the, all the packets will do the same service chain. But using a Cosmos, you can do a different uh, service chain based on application. Like for video, maybe just one simple one. Like for the uh, uh, enterprise applications, you may go to the firewall, go to the other stuff. Uh, so it, uh, uh, it can run on the hypervisor, can run on the NFVI and the WinF, and uh, can also capture packets on the vSwitch uh, side. So establishing NFV visibility for each service is a key success factor. Actually, we have a lot of uh, white paper uh, with this product, together with the intern, like uh, how to use this in the VCP solution. If you guys are interested, you can Google it. Okay, basically that's my uh, slides. Thanks for your time. If you have any questions, I will be around here. Thank you.